Maybe I should continue a little bit. I think I should. You know, I've actually, I haven't actually played uh, anything from the, of the letter for a little bit over two weeks. But I've still been quite active with videos because I tend to record for a really long time when I, yeah, when I play. So, yeah, I'm just gonna continue a little bit more. Half darkness greets me when my eyes finally snap open, the soft patter of dripping water somewhere spurring my consciousness further. For a few short moments, I remain still, blinking away the dizziness, allowing my vision to adjust to the lack of light and my breathing to even out first before pushing myself up on the one arm and attempting to stand. Turning alone is a struggle on its own. An ancient movement sends a stab of sharp pain right up my arms and my back, giving me another pause. <clears throat> Shit! I hope I didn't break anything. Fuck. I hope so too, because we might have to run later. There doesn't seem to be any injury or major fracture, although the hole in my back does feel sore and raw. By the way, now I kind of realized that perhaps this sort of needs to happen, because uh, now, like, someone else knows about this place, but maybe he's just going to be trapped in here until someone else tries to find him? I don't know. Uh. Probably from when I've skipped down prior to landing myself here. A comforting thought. The second attempt comes easier later, though no less painful. And by the time I'm back on my feet, the exertion has left me gasping in short, shallow breaths and leaning heavily on the wall nearest to me. Behind me, a light draft blows even from where I've fallen in, coming in short, sharp bursts into what's apparently an underground tunnel and brings in the fresh, earthy smell of rain from the top side. Regardless, it fails to must old, dusty, no, musty scent of the place. A mixture of mold. I was like watching the dust, so it's like, yeah, it's must. No, it's dusty. Now I couldn't even say the right, the wrong word. Jeez. A mixture of mold, mildew, dust, grease, and something distinctly foul. Oh, it's her corpse, right? Like death. The woman's corpse, not Marianne's corpse. <laughs> I hope not. More worrisome than the putrid fastening smell, however, are the cells that line both sides of the tunnel. Under the dim light, I can barely make out what's inside on some of them, but I already have a few ideas, all of which I refuse to delve into at the moment. Knowing how long this mansion has stood, probably those kids, those poor kids, right? Somehow, no matter how unexpected finding the existence of this place is, it isn't too surprising. I wonder if Scumbag knows about this. I wonder too. I really wonder about that. I'm going to be so excited playing his part. Probably not. Unless he's also the kind of person who takes joy in inflicting this kind of suffering on others. I don't really think so. He's rotten to the core, but not that rotten. He'll probably balk at this, move out at the first opportunity, and have it demolished. The very idea of what has occurred in this place years ago makes me real as well. I've known long ago places like this tend to hold secrets. This, though? If this is just the tip of the iceberg? I fear what I may discover in the mansion itself and the tale behind that fucking letter. The fear is inconsequential. As unpleasant as the sight of this is, this place might also be the only way for me to get inside unnoticed. Exactly! Like, this might have been a good thing as long as you don't get imprisoned. Sighing and taking one last gulp of clean air, I push away from the wall and delve deeper into the passage. Let's just hope it'll be smooth sailing from here on. Yeah. Uh, great. Turns out that alone is too much to ask for this early. 
Oh, 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 I thought they were like, yeah, you're alone. You're, you're not going to make it out of here. Okay, oh, okay, so Marianne is here. Marianne. She's alive. No 20 paces into it, another sound abruptly ra rises above my footfalls. Rebounding off the hollow walls and echoing inaudibly across the whole span of the tunnel before fading away just as swiftly as it rang. I paused, nevertheless, straining my ears for more of it. While I gradually moved my hand to my side, slow and steady until the tips of my fingers brush off the gun's handle. Although cold against my skin is the closest thing I have to comfort at the moment. For a long minute, I wait, holding my breath, watching every form, edge, and shadow at the corners of my vision for any movement. After heartbeat and nothing, I allow the tension to ease out of me in the form of a long, slow exhale that rubber barrets around the whole passage. Who? Who's there? It's me. It's a me, Mario. Okay, that was the worst impression ever. Perhaps it's because of what has happened earlier and how I've ended up in here, or maybe it's because of my training. But in spite of the panic and fear in that voice, I don't immediately answer. Instead, I pull my gun free from its holster and wordlessly draw closer to where the voice rings at once again. Afraid? Frantic? Weak? <laughs> I'm asking you a question! Who's there? It's only after I realized the safety do I answer, while continuing my approach in a careful, steady pace. I think I should be the one asking you that! Who are you? Show yourself! I... I can't! I'm stuck in here! Well, a ghost will definitely not be seeing that, or have a conversation like this, or be stuck anywhere. And, if, and as if to prove her point, she extends a hand from one of the cells ahead and waves. Then she pulls back, grips the iron bars, and rattles it lightly. I can't get out! Can you help? Ugh. Wait, what? There's no woman. In five quick steps, I'm standing in front of the cell, and sure enough, a woman's inside. Why is she why hasn't she been like drawn? Slumped on the floor, holding the bars with shaking hands, clinging to it as if it's the only thing keeping her upright. And not just any woman. You are uh McLaughlin? McLaughlin <laughs> It's McCullough. The same one I met at G's five days ago, smashed drunk and babbling her frustrations about her employers. Holmes? <laughs> no, not McLaughlin. McCullough. Marianne McCullough. Famous interior designer extraordinaire. Not so extraordinary now, with how exhausted and feeble she looks. Feeble she looks. Trapped in a jail cell, of all things. Her breathing's shallow and there's a paleness to her complexion. Sunken eyes, cracked lips, dry skin, all signs pointing to starvation and dehy dehydration. What? You... How long have you been stuck in here? Three days? Four? I... I don't know. I have no idea anymore. Yeah, it's not like she can see the sunlight during the day or anything. Gosh, it's... That's just awful. I can't even imagine how how freaking terrifying this would be. I just fell in and that woman, whatever. Can you get me out of here, please? In a moment, but here, go feed yourself first before you fall over. I fish out an energy bar from my pocket and hand it to her. She's lucky I always have one on my person. For sudden emergencies or extended stakeouts, a little sugar to keep me going. Like any starving person, she wastes no time making a grip for it, unwrapping it straightway, and taking in a whole mouthful of it. Relief washes over her face on the first bite alone, although she's going to need more than that if what she has said is true. But for the moment, it's enough to keep her alive. 
good thing she seems to have the sense to prioritize survival over comfort if the puddle in the corner of the cell indicates anything. Great. Poor woman. Jeez. Without water, the human body can only survive three days. No food and ill giving an average of three weeks, though even then it won't be a pretty experience. Granted, some have survived longer than that. She's still fortunate I found her when I did. Now to get her out. My bob my bobby my bobby pins won't be oh, of course. My bobby pins won't be of any use here. Not like I need it. Unlike the ones we have at the precinct, a simple barrel hinge holds the great the gates to this all together. Even without any special tools, we'll be able to lift the door and free her. However, with how heavy it seems, I'll need a lever of some sort to help. Oh, what are you looking for? Some wood, a two by four, I guess, a plank or a pipe, anything I can use as a lever. Wait here. The hallway yields nothing but dust, dirt, and a few rush chains scattered about. While I may find something in one of the open cells, I'm reluctant to check or even step in. We can't have another person trapped in here. However, McCullough ended up inside. Well, there's no- <laughs> Love her voice. My head snaps back to her. McCullough extricates a wooden board from under the mess of hay and twine near her. Without prompting, she slips it through a little space there is in between the bars. It's short, but appears thick and sturdy enough for my intended purpose upon closer inspection. Good enough. I hope. I get to work at once, anarch anchoring the other end of the plank at the base of the door and applying ample force on the other end. It takes a bit of effort. No kidding about the heavy part. Still, a grunt, a gasp, a creak. In a matter of minutes, with a little help from her on the other side, the door eventually lifts off its hinges. It falls on the ground with a loud, ugly, metallic thud, but the sound of it puts a lection on McCulloch's face. Welcome to your freedom, I suppose. She doesn't even ask for help. As soon as she can, she hastily crawls out of the prison she has accidentally found herself in. More than happy to get out of it, despite lacking the strength to stand firmly on her feet. Thank you! Thank you so much! Uh -huh. Prison break. I haven't seen the show, though. But still funny. After the second day, I was so sure I was going to die in there! If you didn't show up... I don't even want to think about it. Alright, so I am satisfied about this. This is all I wanted. Right, this is great. I was so worried that I wouldn't be able to because I was alone. Great. I'm a little bit relieved, which probably means that something effed up is going to happen any second. Perfect. How did you even end up here? For a second, she appears hesitant, looking away and fumbling awkwardly with her fingers. I... I, I was looking for something. Someone. A contemplative expression flickers in her eyes. Something that's close to wistful, like when a person remembers a memory she's found of. It doesn't last long, last too long, but it still leaves me the impression that I've suddenly walked into something private. Something deeply personal for her. I'd rather not ask. Any further, that is. Hey. So this whole tunnel, at the end of it, it leads right inside the mansion? The wine cellar. Right into the kitchen, then. There's a... a door of some sorts. I don't know. I think I pulled or pressed something somewhere. I was in a hurry. And I'm not sure if it'll open from this side. Hell, this place wasn't even in the floor plans. What, what? do you mean? Oh. <laughs> Does that really matter now? We have to get out of here. People died in this place. Kids. Oh, God. Kids. I could have shown you, but that thing won't turn back on anymore. 
It's like it only waited for me to see it before shutting down or something. How long has that thing even been in there? But those poor kids, all because of that thing. Wait, hold on. What are you talking about right now? The bloody letter! Ever since I've read that thing, since that day at the open house, she won't leave me. But it should be fine, all right? I broke it. I broke all of it. She shouldn't be able to do anything now. Nicola, one at a time. You're... It's all that fucking paper's fault! Oh, God. Oh, God. Dear Lord and St. Adelaide, bless those poor souls. We're not safe here. We need to leave. If we stay here any longer... Mikalo! Abruptly, she stops. Looks back at me with wild, panic-stricken eyes. I've seen enough of it so many times these past few days, from my own friends, even. To know she has seen things kind that'll easily make any person go mad. And perhaps we slowly are. The longer this takes, the faster our descent into it comes. I can't even tell which one's worse, death or this. Seems like no matter what we end up with, there'll be something horrible waiting for us. I need Listen, to hurry. I need to get inside this place, and you're more familiar with its layout. If you can help me... What? No! Why would I go back? Are you sure you haven't gotten raving mad yet? An exit's right here! And this business with the letter has to end at some point. Look, I know you're not very fond of Luke Wright. Damn right I'm not. He can just go. But are you really sure you want to leave him like this? And what about his wife? Oh, 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 it strikes a short. She falters, grows quiet as the tension lifts from her and her shoulders slump. I do understand her issues with this. In fact, she doesn't even... She doesn't have to go with me, only tell me enough info so I can figure it out on my own. She can always leave afterwards, but it'd be done with this whole damn mansion or letter. The other end of this tunnel leads right into the forest. It would provide ample cover for her to be able to slip out of the property unnoticed. All the same, she steals herself and squares her shoulders. Just until the kitchens. That's more than enough. She nods, albeit weakly. No, don't leave me. And then without another word, she gestures for me to follow, leading me further into the past. Oh, okay. Let's read the journal. After his fall, Ashton found himself in an underground passage when he came to. Uh, there, he encountered Marianne McCullough, who got trapped in one of his jail cells for several days. The detective managed to free her, and in turn, she helped him find a way into the mansion. Yay. Occasionally, she'll stop, find precious on the, f on the wall to catch her breath, but throughout the short walk, she asked for neither a break nor assistance. I suppose that's something we have in common. Eventually, we get to a dead end. Although, before I can question her on it, she begins palming for something on the wall, tracing her fingers along withered edges of the bricks with a frown on her face. It should be somewhere here, I think. What the hell are you doing? She merely holds up a hand, begging for my science and continues searching. Then, without warning, a few minutes later, something clicks. A portion of the wall shifts ajar to reveal a glimpse of another room. Bottles lining the, wall, lining the walls, liquor barrels for aging, the wine cellar indeed. The ladder to the kitchen is on the far end of this room. Surreal. This is all nothing but a surreal nightmare, but after everything, should this even surprise me? Ghosts? Curses? Hidden passages? I can't even bring myself to question the existence of this door anymore. I simply follow her to the undercroft without a single question, in spite of a number of them already swimming inside my head. As a kid, I used to crave for this kind of adventure. The stuff of mystery in the detective novels? Daring chases? Interesting cases to solve? Suspects to put behind bars, justice to serve. I was blinded, I admit. Now, I simply want this to be over. Oh, the 
it's not there anymore. What? It's not there. What the hell? Was it because the ghost like came out of the the mirrors or she took the mirror with her? <laughs> we'll leave the door open in case there's a need for quick exit. Especially after she mentions it's only by chance she has been able to open the door the last time. We can't waste time finding the switch again on the occasion something goes horribly wrong. There's bound to be with me feeling this high, strong, and tense. I'm not even sure why I thought it would be a good idea to enlist McCullough's help. Although she has been quite helpful so far, I can't shake off the horrible feeling something's going to happen to her if she stays with me. Even if I'm her safest bet if she wants to get out of this place alive. You really believe that, don't you? Shit. Did you say something? McCullough pauses mid-step, turning to me, confused. I... I didn't! You... you sure? I just heard... Don't you think I'll be the first person who will know? Look, the ladder leading to the kitchen's up ahead. You might want to hurry. I just want to be done with this place. See? You dragged another one. This time, I'm sure. There's really a voice. Well, voices? Despite the look of protest McCullough shoots me, I find myself stopping and looking for it. Searching the immediate surrounding for the familiar form of the woman. I don't even have to venture too far from where I'm standing. Just an arm's length away from me. Oh, really? Mirror shards litter the floor. Ah. Oh. I write on the biggest fragments. They speak. Is that... Um... Rose? Rebecca? <laughs> Did I seriously say Rose? What? What is going on with my brain? I can never remember her name. It's so weird. And that's Zack. Is that supposed to be Sabella? Great. All singing the same mocking tone against my ears, letting it echo throughout the small undercraft. Murmurs and laughters, jeering, scoffing, derriding, 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 lacing venom into every uh, crevice in my head. Taunting. You dragged another person into this ashen. Into another one of your silly little problems. All because you can't fix them on your own. You really haven't changed, have you? Some hero you are. Useless. Pathetic. You're wrong! My mistake lies in this first instance I've answered. The very second denial has slipped from my mouth, their words have also seeped into my heart, allowing it to proud it at the end, at and rose my temper, rouse my temper. Despite knowing they are merely doing this to grow, goad me, each word, each syllable trickled into me, spurring the guilt I hope I have long buried. Are we? Or is that simply what you've been telling yourself all this time? Something to make yourself feel better, perhaps? You're the one who took that letter off Isabella's hand that day. You're the one who opened it. How does it feel, I wonder, to know you're responsible for all of this? What do you think I'm doing? Why do you think I'm still trying to fix this? Oh, but you can't. It's already too late. And you know that. You know all of this is futile. <laughs> Just face it, Ashton Frey. You're a failure, and they are the ones who have to pay for it. And a gun, and you still can't protect your own friends. Can't even solve a case for an old man. Can't even bring Luke right to justice. Can't even keep his own family together. No wonder they left you before you do the same thing to them. Mom and Dad are better off without little old you, aren't they? It's a good thing they had the sense. Pitiful, isn't it? Some detective you are. Some friend you are. Some son you are. You might as well just throw that rank away. 
You're no use to people either way. Shut it! I hate this. I hate how this monster can easily get through to me. Every weakness, every insecurity, it knows. To hear it said in my friend's voice, even more so. But what I hate above all of it is... You know it's true, though. All of it. It's why all you can do is tell us to shut up. You don't want to hear a single word, because you're already aware of it. You can't even admit it to yourself. Who's the coward now? But no matter how hard you try, you're not going to be able to say anyone. Shut it! Not a single word anymore! In the end, your own incompetence will eventually lead to the deaths of everyone you care about. Um... Why was that a story update? I wonder. In the end, your own incompetence will eventually lead to the deaths of everyone you cared about. Interesting. It laughs, sharp and piercing. At its sound, something in me snaps. A rage hastily, unfilling, red filling my vision. And the next thing I know, I'm raising my hand, and something grabs at my wrist, followed by a buzz as another voice Don't listen to it! Face. The fog from my mind lifts. Every second, every sound, every noise returns to me, floating my every senses. All at once, there is this deafening silence. Deafening, jeez. Silence. Slowly, I become aware of my surroundings. Bottles of wine, barrels of liquor, the faint old scent of death and decay somewhere, and a hand holding on to my wrist as if it's to keep me from hurting myself. In my hands, a shard. Blood drips from where it has cut my palm, trailing down my wrist until it disappears behind my sleeve. Not too deep, negligible even. There is a pain, however. A different kind. An ache somewhere else to steams that stems not from the wound, but where every single word has hit. When I glance up at Makala, she merely stares at me with don't wide Don't listen to it! Eyes. No matter what happens, don't do what it says! It's how it gets us. My grip on the shard falters, but only after I nod and drop it entirely does she re release her grip. Afterwards, she simply steps back and looks away, hugging her arms closer to herself. She breathes a sigh. Heavy. Perhaps waited with her own guilt. Well, this monster Come on, might have used we're getting close. Her. She walks off without another comment, but there is worry in her as she gives the fragments one last glimpse. Before we could go deeper into the wine cellar, Ashton began to hear voices coming from mirror from mirror the shards from the mirror shards on the floor, mocking him for his failures. Though before he could do anything rash, Maria stopped him. But lately he realized he had picked up a broken mirror shard. Oh wait, because she if I oh my gosh, wait, this is interesting. Because um, if, um, he, okay, so if Marion wouldn't have followed after Hana on all that stuff and found the mirror and, you know, got haunted by her, um, love, committed suicide and all that stuff, she wouldn't have ended up in the cellar, so... Then he would have been in there here alone. So would he have died or you know gone insane or whatever if she wasn't there to stop him? That is if he is alone in here. And I mean she's got experience from it too. So I mean she's the one who knows most about it, but perhaps the 
quote unquote best uh, way of a uh, or path or however you want to say would have been if he was with like the others in here and she wasn't trapped. I mean, she like she was fine. I don't know, but it's interesting. It's an interesting thing to think about. Uh, she walks off without another comment, but there's worry in her she gives the fragments one last glimpse. On the ground, they lie lifeless now. No more voices, no more insults. But even as I walk away, one whisper taunt continues. It's useless, Ashton Frey. You are going to die. And you are going to die alone. <laughs> Oh, great. <laughs> a fear. One that has been long kept in the darkest place in my heart. One that a small part of me wishes for. Alright. 